We are about to go on a safari and I want to show you guys around this area because it is spectacular. It's mind blowing. Lots of wild dogs and elephants and birds. And leopards. Hi guys. Greetings from another wintry day here in Alberta, Canada. A few days ago, I released a video about my top animals that you should watch out for on an African safari. And it's still pretty wintry here in Alberta and I'm still thinking about traveling down somewhere in Africa, whether that's east or southern or west, somewhere, somewhere warmer than here. And I decided it was a good day to go over some of my top African safari travel tips. So let's get to it. Okay, so safari tip number one. Shh, no yelling. You aren't in a zoo and the animals are not domesticated here. When safari goers are visiting animals in their natural habitat, the excitement can be overwhelming. It's a very exciting experience, especially the first time you see a big male lion. The urge to get up, wave your arms and yell is not how to act on safari though. Humans are guests in the animal's home and should act accordingly. Some of these animals are quite dangerous and it doesn't matter if you're in a truck if an elephant decides to charge you after you startle them. So our guide has grown up in the bush and right now he saw lion tracks so we got out of the car to go find them. <laughs> Pretty impressive, but I'm gonna stick right here in the car. Safari tip number two, dress the part. It is so sunny and hot here. A hat and sunglasses are absolutely essential. Not only is it fun to dress up in safari gear, but those green and khaki clothes actually do serve a practical purpose. Safari clothes are purpose built and made to be comfortable, blend in with the environment, and hold up to the elements of the African bush. This doesn't mean that you need to go full blown leopard print or get a monocle, but it does mean wearing clothes that are appropriate to the safari environment. If you don't want to get new clothes though, don't stress, you can honestly wear whatever you want since you'll be in a car most of the time. Sometimes I even just wear flip flops. That is unless you're going out on a bushwalk when you don't want the animals spotting any odd colors. If you're doing some bushwalks, we recommend packing a good pair of safari boots to wear and avoiding big loud colors like red, neon pink, or bright blue. Safari tip number three. Get some good camera gear if you care about your photos. The phone is not going to do a lot for you. If you care about getting great wildlife photos, you're going to need more than a phone. Although you're going to get closer to the African animals than ever before, to really capture them on camera requires some good lenses. We recommend a telephoto lens. Something around 200 millimeters plus should do the job. That doesn't mean you're going to need an 800 millimeter lens that costs as much as a car. However, get ready for lens envy on Safari because some photographers take it very seriously. We'll provide a link in the bottom showing exactly what we have, but keep in mind, if you're okay with iPhone photos, then just stick with that. Safari tip number four, wake up early. So it is 5.20 a.m. and we are walking to the main lodge to hop in our game viewer. Right now the sun is not up, but this is about the typical time you start a day on safari. Coffee. Thank you. Sleeping in is not for safari, it's for the beach afterwards. You're going to have to be an early riser on safari. Animals are the most active in the morning and evening, as the midday sun is just too hot for them to be moving around. This is why most safari days consist of two game drives, a morning one and an evening safari. The morning typically involves waking up at the crack of dawn and having coffee on the go. Evening game drives are our absolute favorite since they leave in the afternoon and end with a cold gin and tonic. Number five, enjoy a sundowner. Always. Speaking of gin and tonic, Cheers. the best way to end a safari day is without a doubt a beautiful sunset and a drink. Or in other words, a sundowner. What's a sundowner? Well, it's pretty much ritual when on African safari. It's where you're going to have a drink while the sun is setting, celebrating a long African day's end. Thank you. Sit in our way. Number six, get some binoculars. Identifying birds or spotting what animals on the horizon requires some great eyes or a good pair of binoculars. Since most of us do not have the eyes of an eagle, we'd say a pair of binoculars is crucial on safari. 
that tip, it brings me to my next safari tip, number seven. Don't forget about the birds. One of our favorite activities we learned about on safari is birding. Yes, that's right, we've become minor birders and there are a ton of beautiful ones on Africa to view and enjoy. It's not just all about the lions and the elephants. Take the time to enjoy the little guys too. Safari tip number eight. Don't be afraid to ask questions. There are no stupid questions. <laughs> Actually, there are stupid questions. One time my safari guide told, told me someone asked him, when does a chimpanzee turn into a gorilla? Don't be afraid to ask questions for your guide. They are happy to answer them and provide all the information they can to guess. You're not on safari every day, so may as well gather all the knowledge you can from these guys and girls. Trust me, they know a lot. Safari tip number nine, stay healthy. You'll be spending a lot of time in the bush and a lot of time sitting. There are a few ways we suggest mitigating the health risk of both. You gotta stay hydrated when on safari. Just drink plenty of water so you don't get dehydrated and keep yourself covered from the sun. But it's late October here and it is very hot and very dry. I'll never forget the day that Cameron was so burned he had blisters on his face. Make sure to bring sunblock and a hat. Stay limber. In between game drives, it's important to walk around, do some yoga, exercise, and stretch. Make sure to get some shut-eye. Don't underestimate the importance of rest. This one shouldn't be too hard, but you'll need to go to bed early on safari since you'll be rising at the crack of dawn. Make sure to bring a small medical kit and all of your medications that you might need in, in an emergency. If you're in the bush and you need something, it's going to be very, very difficult to get it. Take anti-malarial medication if you are a worrier. We are not doctors, but we do recommend taking precautions against malaria if you're in high-risk areas. As always, cover up at night, wear insect repellent, use a mosquito net, and just always be aware of your surroundings. Safari tip number 10. Don't go on safari expecting Wi-Fi and bring a few good books. A book is never a bad idea while on safari as there's typically no Wi-Fi and you are here to enjoy the bush anyway. We're always surprised by other guests on safari that go into the bush and are shocked when there is no Wi-Fi. Many safari lodges are quite literally in the middle of absolutely nowhere, meaning there is no Wi-Fi. Or if there is, it's incredibly slow and painful and it's really not even worth your time trying to get on it anyway, as you'll be spending your precious Africa time trying to send a work email. It's best to go into your safari not expecting connection. There will be downtime, but this is for napping, reading a book, or chatting with others. We live in such a digital and connected world nowadays anyway, I actually enjoy being in the bush and knowing that I cannot get on the internet to check on things. Safari tip number 11, my last safari tip. Don't forget to tip your guide. To be a safari guide in Africa is a coveted job. A good guide is responsible, knows his or her safari animals, has ample knowledge of the bush, and many times has grown up in the environment they work in. A safari guide is up before you and goes to bed after you. They are switched on all the time and answer all your questions that they have without a doubt been asked over a hundred times. Working in a safari lodge is a great job to have and most take it very, very seriously. However, after talking to some of the guides, they still don't make what you think they make. Tipping a guide and other lodge staff is like tipping your server at a restaurant in the US. It's not mandatory, but is almost expected and appreciated. These people work very hard to ensure you are having an enjoyable holiday and it's important to reward them if you think they are doing a good job. I know African safaris are incredibly expensive and you probably don't want to dish out more cash after dropping so much on the holiday itself, but it's important to keep a budget for tips. Bring a US dollar if you can or the local currency. A standard guideline for tipping is between 10 and $15 per person per day for your guide and anywhere between $5 to $15 per person per day for the general employees. However, many safari companies will have a booklet or send you a pre-checklist PDF with all this information on it beforehand. I will mimic your smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure I could rattle off a ton of other safari tips for a safari around Africa, whether that's in South Africa, Tanzania, Kenya. Safaris are so different everywhere you go, but these are the most general safari tips for everywhere that I can mention. So I really, really hope that they help you on your first safari to somewhere in Africa. If you guys enjoy this video, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I don't do a lot of videos with this talking head 
uh, kind of narration throwback, but I want to start. And also, if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe right there or like right there. I don't know. One of these. Oh, <laughs> my